Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at Z-axis binding. Now, what is that? Well, basically, Z-axis binding is when your X-axis assembly that has your print head on it is trying to move up on the Z-axis screw for every su subsequent layer after the first. And at some point, it's sticking. Uh, it's not able to move up that screw smoothly so you get extra compressed layers because it's not moving up the full layer height for each layer so the plastic is getting squished more and your overall model will be shorter than what it was supposed to be so what we're looking at here is a dragon lock tile uh, that we do here at fat dragon games and this was done on a brand new uh, Ender 3 V2 that I had just assembled. And I looked at the print, and for the first few millimeters there, it's getting Z axis binding. That's why it's looking squished out there. The print head is not moving up enough to allow all of the plastic that is allocated for that layer to come out cleanly. So since there is essentially too much plastic for the amount of height that it is moving up, the plastic is squishing outward. And that's why you're getting uh, that wider base for the first, oh, however, I guess it's about three millimeters or so. And then it's getting past the binding and able to move up the full amount it's supposed to. So then it levels out and the layers look like they're supposed to. So this can happen at any point you could have the first two or three inches of a model look great and then have z-axis binding because of a issue with the screw or the screw being dirty or uh being you know the screw bent or something like that um but we'll take a look here at some real easy fixes for z-axis binding um and then finally at a part you can buy for your under three that will fix pretty much every issue with binding now before we get into the various fixes for Z-axis binding, I want you to take a look at your Z-axis screw. Um, the simplest and most common cause of problems with the screw is that the screw itself is dirty. Uh, if it's properly lubricated, um, you're going to attract dust and dirt and small bits of uh, filament on it. And these can build up and cause binding. So before we get into any of the other fixes I'm going to talk about in this video, take a look at your screw. Make sure there's no dirt or debris in it. And if there is, just clean it off with an old toothbrush and apply a little more lubrication and see if that resolves it. So to get started with here, the first thing, if you're experiencing this, I want you to do is make sure that the two screws that attach the brass coupler for the z-axis screw to the x-axis bracket tighten these down fully and then loosen them each two full turns you want them loose what this will do is allow that coupler to shift as necessary to accommodate slides uh, in that z-axis screw mounting if it's tilted a little bit or if there's a little bit of bend to the screw will um, compensate for that and make the ender work normally and you won't have any more issues with z-axis binding this one uh, and i recommend everybody do this whether you are experiencing z-axis binding or not keep these two screws if you're not having any issues, about one and a half turns loose. If you are having some issues, keep them about two turns loose. Um, I do this on all of my machines and it really helps a lot. The next thing you should look at is the eccentric nut for the x-axis carriage on the right hand side of the x-axis assembly. If this is too tight, what it's going to do is make this end lag so the opposite end that actually goes up and down the screw is going to move up this side is not going to want to move uh, evenly with it and you'll get tilt and drag with it and that can cause binding so make sure uh, if you're not sure how to adjust these go look at my ender 3 v2 build video there's a section in that on how to properly calibrate uh, and tune your eccentric nut wheels. So check that out. Make sure this is not too tight. Now, if these two things did not solve your Z-axis binding, we're going to have to take a look now at the actual mounting of the 
z-axis motor and we're gonna have to see if it's aligned properly or not to do this the first thing I want you to do is loosen this top screw on the coupler that holds uh, the z-axis screw to the motor loosen this to where the you can actually lift out the screw next up we're going to do the exact opposite of what I told you a few minutes ago. I want you to tighten these two uh, coupler screws up. Uh, you do not want any wiggle in the brass coupler here. You want it to be completely tight. Now, you're going to remove the two screws that hold the Z-axis motor to the vertical uh, frame of the printer. You want to take these screws completely out so that the motor is free floating. Once you have done that, I want you to take the x-axis assembly and drop the screw through it downward until it hits the motor. And remember, your motor is free floating now. It's not up against that rail. What you're wanting to do is see if the motor assembly lines up with the screw when the screw has no play because you've tightened the two nuts on the coupler. It should drop straight down and hit the coupler for the motor mount with the motor mount uh, pushed against the vertical extrusion frame. So it should look like this. If it doesn't, if uh, to get it to line up, you have to move your motor away from the frame, uh, this is likely your problem. What's happening is that uh, bracket that I'm showing here in green is probably bent wrong or the cutout for the coupler at the top is misaligned or something and that's causing the alignment to make your uh, z-axis motor uh, for everything to be aligned it's going to end up being away from your frame in there you're going to have a gap so what's going to happen is when you mount your motor to the frame it's causing that z-axis screw to be at an angle as you're showing here it's towing in at the bottom and moving away from the frame at the top and that's what's causing your z-axis binding so the easy fix for that is to simply put a shim in between the motor and the frame and that will keep your screw perfectly vertical uh, that shim can just be a couple of washers uh, between the motor mount and the frame where the two screws mount it to the frame uh, I've seen people use like dimes or quarters just in between the motor and the frame too. That works. It just depends on how big your gap is. But you want to get it to where your screw does not have that, um, that angle to it. You want it vertical. Um, if that's not the issue, if your motor is still aligned, it could be that your Z-axis screw itself is slightly bent or has a defect in it. Um, I've only had this issue with one of my original Ender 3s, uh, and the way to get it to go away is use a flexible shaft coupling for the Z-axis screw. Now I love these things, they are absolutely fantastic, and I put them on all of my Enders now whether they have an issue or not, simply because I really do believe there is a slight bump in print quality having this flexible coupler. Uh, they're not super expensive, you can get a two pack for about $12.99 so it's about $6.50 per printer to put these on um, it's not a huge investment for the print quality boost I really do recommend them if you get these uh, if you look at this the ones you want are the um, five millimeter to eight millimeter because it's a different size hole on each side the five millimeter hole is for the shaft on the motor the eight millimeter hole is for the z-axis screw and as you can see here this is all it is looks like when it's installed it just replaces the stock coupler that comes with the printer the only uh the, the stock coupler that comes with the printer does allow for a very minor amount of flex but nothing close to what this does with the rubber insert so if z-axis binding is something you are experiencing and the things i've mentioned earlier in this video don't resolve it odds are this will and um, again it's it's a cheap upgrade and it really does help a lot so that's it that covers all of the things you can do for z-axis binding uh, please click those like and subscribe buttons and thank you for watching